joined by distinguished guests and clergy and members of the Coptic community and more. Um, join us as we celebrate this historic evening. Before we begin the night, I would like to acknowledge traditional custodians of the land, the Garigal people of the Eora Nation. We pay our respects to the elders past and present. We would also like to acknowledge God who made the heavens and the earth and under whose grace we all live today. Thank you. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, it is my privilege to extend a warm and heartfelt welcome to each and every one of you to this prestigious celebration, commemorating Coptic New Year. As we gather in unity and reverence, we are honoured to share in the rich traditions and profound spirituality of this occasion. We would like to express our gratitude to those who couldn't be with us tonight but have sent on their well wishes, including the Prime Minister of Australia, the Honourable Mr Anthony Albanese. Your kind words and support are greatly appreciated. I think I speak on behalf of all cops when I say I'm proud to call Australia home. As a first generation Australia, Australian, I deeply recognise and appreciate the warm and welcome extended to our forefathers when they arrived on these shores. Australia has been generously providing us with many opportunities to prosper and thrive, and we hold deep gratitude for this hospitality. In addition, I'm also immensely proud to say that I'm a Coptic Egyptian. I carry with me the rich tapestry of my heritage, a heritage deeply intertwined with the history of Egypt itself. Coptics are, Egypt, are Egypt's indigenous people. Our roots run deep, tracing back thousands of years, and our cultural heritage is a testament to the, religi uh, to the resilience and enduring spirit of our community. From the majestic Coptic churches and monasteries that adorn the cities of Egypt to the rich traditions that have been passed down through generations, our heritage is the source of our faith, strength, and our unity. Our Australian Coptic community is a testament to the strength of diversity in Australia. We come from all walks of life, each contributing unique skills and experiences that enrich our mosaic nation, the mosaic of this nation. Our community is known for its strong work ethic, commitment to peace, and a deep love for Australia, our chosen home. We are dedicated to being active and engaged citizens, continually striving to make meaningful and positive contributions to every aspect of Australian society. There are over 150,000 cops in Australia, each making valuable contributions in their own unique ways, from professionals excelling in various fields to devoted community leaders and volunteers working tirelessly to make a difference for our community. The Parliamentary Friends of Egypt was established to bring awareness and understanding to the members of Parliament on issues impacting the Australian Egyptian community of New South Wales. It's been established to investigate and develop opportunities uh, for cultural and economic relations between Egypt and New South Wales, and to establish a relationship with the Sydney Egyptian Consulate to develop bilateral uh, relations and to participate in seminars, receptions, and other events as we are doing here tonight. Tonight, the Parliamentary Friends of Egypt are honored to participate in the celebration of the Coptic New, he New Year here in New South Wales Parliament. The Coptic New Year, also known as Nehruz, is celebrated by Coptic Christians to mark the beginning of the litur liturgical year. It falls on 11th or 12th of uh, September in a leap year, in a Gregorian uh, calendar, which corresponds to the first day of the Coptic month. The Coptic calendar is based on the ancient Egyptian calendar and has been used by the Coptic Orthodox Church for centuries. In Sydney, as in other cities with significant Coptic Christian population, you may find Coptic New Year celebrations taking place in Coptic Orthodox churches and within the Coptic community. These celebrations typically include religious services, prayers, hymns, and feasting. I want to express my deepest appreciation to the Coptic community for sharing their beautiful tradition with us tonight here in Parliament House. Now I'd like to welcome um, the children of St. Mark's College to delight us with a musical performance. So please give them uh, your, your attention and, and a big round of applause. Never easy performing. <laughs>
I sought to share with you f four motives. The Christian Coptic martyrs were taking on and adopted in their lives the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered to save us to the degree that he was crucified on the cross to save us from the death and curse. He said in John chapter 15, verse 20, remember what I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. The Christian Coptic master were severely persecuted to the degree of death, yet they blessed their persecutors. As St. Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verse 14, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. So the true Christian never knows or experience hatred, never. The second motive, the Christian Coptic martyrs believed in what our Redeemer and Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ said about the hardships, sufferings the Christian will face in the world. They accepted these afflictions and sufferings with love and faith in Christ. They were in peace during the time of affliction and hardships. As we share together this passage from John chapter 16, verse 33, the Lord Jesus Christ said, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The true Christian is always in peace, despite the internal or external hard factors. One of the strong mot motives of the Christian Coptic martyr is that they knew that the end of these sufferings, afflictions, and hardships will turn to great glory for them. St. Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 18, for I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The Coptic Orthodox Church experiencing glorifying the martyrs since the inception of Christianity in Egypt in the first century. The Coptic Orthodox Church used to name their churches, their monasteries, their nunneries, their schools, their Coptic institutions, their Coptic organizations, and even their sons and daughters in the name of the martyr. So we call our sons and daughters San Marina, Marina for San Marina, Mina for San Mina, and etc. Moreover, in the day of the martyrdom of the saint, we used to conduct a big celebration. For example, Today, we celebrated the martyrdom of St. John the Baptist. Finally, last point I would like to mention. I will conclude with this last motive for the Christian martyrs who are not cops, and I can say not Christians. <laughs> they were not Christians, they were not cops. Let me say the story. Some of the non-believers, non-Christians, non-cops, were present in the time of the crucifixion of Christ. One of the soldiers call, called Lingenos. Lingenos, can I share you what's written in Matthew chapter 27, verse 54? So when the centurion and those who with him, who were guarding Jesus, saw the earthquakes and the things 
that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the son of God. The name of this centurion was Longanus, who is honored by the Coptic Orthodox Church. He became Christian, and he became martyr as well. The Coptic Orthodox Church honored him. Not only the Coptic Church, but the Greek Orthodox Church, the Roman Catholic Church, the Anglican Communion, the Eastern Orthodox Church as well. And the Coptic Orthodox Church used to celebrate his martyrdom in the 23rd day of the Coptic month, Abib. So the fourth motive is the signs that had been um, revealed during the crucifixion of Christ. This evening is an evening of cultural riches and significance, showcasing the diversity of your community's Coptic traditions and highlighting the importance role, important role that the Coptic Church plays in the lives of the 17,000 strong Coptic community here in New South Wales. It's a growing community with a 14% increase in people identifying with the Coptic Church between the 2016 and 2021 census. Nehruz is a day of great significance, not only for the Coptic Christian community, but for all of us who appreciate the rich tapestry of culture and traditions that make our world so diverse and beautiful. Nehruz marks the beginning of a new year in the Coptic calendar, a calendar that traces its roots back to the ancient Egyptians. It's a time of renewal, reflection, and hope for the future. And as we stand at the threshold of this new year, let's take a moment to reflect on the values and lessons that Nehruz teaches us. First and foremost, Nehruz is a celebration of faith and resilience. The Coptic Christian community has faced numerous challenges throughout its long history, yet it's persevered with unwavering faith and determination. This resilience serves as an inspiration to all of us reminding us that even in the face of adversity, we can find strength in faith to overcome and thrive. Nehruz is also a time of gratitude. It's a time to give thanks for the blessings we've received and the opportunities that lie ahead. It reminds us of the importance of family, community, and the bonds that hold us together. Just as the Coptic community comes together to celebrate this special day, all of us should cherish the bonds that unite us and strive to build a more inclusive and harmonious world. Religious leaders have a vital role to play in promoting community harmony. Religious groups have a vital role in partnering with government to provide a range of services that are culturally appropriate and sensitive. That includes the provision of outreach services, youth groups, e-publishing groups and welfare services. We are the college captains from St. Mark's Coptic Orthodox College in Wattle Grove. My name is Mariah Awad and I'm accompanied with Abinob Kudus, my co-captain. We are the college captains from St. Mary's and St. Mena's Coptic Orthodox College. Together and all, na all named after the names of martyrs, we are proud to be standing here to celebrate Nehru's, the Coptic New Year. And are honoured to talk to you about how the blood of the martyrs all those years ago have shaped us into the men and women that we are today. And as we share the similarities of our martyrs with that of the Anzacs. Celebrating a new year is an exciting milestone that across humanity various times and, religi and religious continents mark as an opportunity to reflect, refresh and hope for new beginnings and opportunities. However, disparate to Western forms of celebrating a new year, the Coptic Nehruz stands unique in marking a new calendar based on the bloodshed and martyrdom of our brothers and sisters who have walked upon this earth before us and shared this same faith we live by daily. It is an eerie yet profound and poignant realization that our Coptic community celebrates the new year with lives lost at the hands of those such as Emperor Diocletian. But it is this realization, this unique undertaking that when truly understood, works to catapult us as students into a sphere of perpetual hope and courage. Worlds away from the persecutions of our past, we stand proud amongst the walls of the Parliament House, a building that stands for democracy and freedom that may look very different or even cease to exist if the sacrifices of our men and women of the Anzacs. As Coptic Australians, it is this rich patchwork tapestry of our identity 
as students to, that allows us to amalgamate our past heritage with our current heritage to forge a vision that to what the Coptic student of the 21st century should be. In a world driven by high-speed internet, cryptocurrency, gambling, and diminishing integrity, a world of immediacy, the Coptic martyrs and the men and women of the Anzacs in their respective historical contexts exemplified the concepts of delayed gratification in profound ways, a concept foreign to our generation, yet one we must ground ourselves in. Delayed gratification is the ability to resist temptation of immediate rewards or pleasures in favor of achieving more significant long-term goals or values. Both the Anzacs and the 116th Pope, Pope Shenouda III, exemplified this long-term concept, albeit 66 years apart. In 1981, Pope Shenouda III, alongside eight bishops, 24 priests, and 24 Christian laymen, were banished to the desert under house arrest, politically gagged, and the Coptic Church under siege. Many put pressure on our Coptic Pope to seek international help. Yet our Pope stayed in silence, praying and preserving, knowing in his wisdom the power of delaying gratification and the strength found in quiet defiance. Whilst a long ordeal, his humility and long preservance served in fruition as the very president who unrightfully banished him was assassinated by the very extremists he, he supported. With the Pope under house arrest, he was protected from any form of accusation. Similarly, our Anzacs leaving Australia with the belief of a support of a short war, enduring for months and years the harshness of trench warfare and arduous conditions, with the long-term objective of protecting democracy, not just for them, but for future generations. Today, we stand living the very freedoms the fa and the faith they long served for a physical testament to delayed gratification and perseverance. On behalf of Premier Chris Minns, I'd like to welcome you to New South Wales Parliament this evening. Celebrations such as this allow us to embrace our shared values and build on the close links that bind our multicultural communities. And it's, and it's one, of, one of the oldest Christian traditions in the world, tracing its origins back to, he, to the historic pilgrimage of St. Mark to Egypt around 50 AD. Nehru's is also a time to honour the martyrs of the Coptic Church. They sacrificed their lives for their faith and their people, people over many years of Egyptian history. The Coptic Orthodox Church in Australia is an important part, a very important part of the rich tapestry of religious traditions flourishing in New South Wales. Three quarters of Egyptian migrants had arrived in Australia by 1976. A decade earlier, the Coptic community sent a letter to Pope Kyrillos VI requesting a priest be sent to serve the community, giving us an indication of how quickly this community was growing. Two years later, in 1971, the first Coptic wedding was held in Sydney on Australia Day. And after 50 years, the Coptic community is truly flourishing. You know, from what I understand, some 50 new churches in 50 years, that's a great achievement. Uh, and our very own chair of the Multicultural New South Wales Board Nick Caldas is one of the most well-known and respected Coptics in New South Wales. Friends, I want to take this opportunity with you today to emphasise that we are committed to ensuring everyone feels safe to practise their religion, free from persecution and fear. Firstly, I would like to thank you all on behalf of His Holiness Pope Tuadus II, on behalf of His Grace, Bishop Daniel of Sydney and His Grace, Bishop Daniel of St. Shenouda Monastery, and on behalf of all Coptic Christians, for your attendance, your support tonight. I'm profoundly grateful for your presence at this momentous gathering. In Nairuz, the crowning of the Coptic year holds a special place in the hearts of all of us who are blessed with a Coptic heritage, but we call Australia home. A home we cherish, a home we have grown to adore, a home that has bestowed upon us the freedom to grow, the freedom to achieve, and to be our authentic selves. 
35 years ago, I migrated to Australia as a young teenager with my family. This beautiful land embraced me, fostered my growth, and enabled me to complete my secondary and my tertiary education. I'm forever grateful for the endless opportunities this land, this country has provided me, has provided my family, and has provided my church. During my recent visit to Cairo, an Australian young youth presented to His Holiness a jar of Vegemite as a way for His Holiness to experience Australia. His Holiness tasted it and naturally inquired, do you like this? <laughs> At that moment, I recalled my initial taste of Vegemite, thinking I could never enjoy it, only to fall in love with it. Eventually, which is a sentiment I, I shared with His Holiness. We are indeed fortunate to live in this magnificent land. The Coptic community in Australia is actually re renowned for its success. A visit to our pharmacy or to our doctor in Sydney will almost certainly lead you to a fellow Copt. <laughs> Not to mention the exemplary figures of success, some of whom are present here with us today. The Honourable, Mr. Edmund Atala, the first Coptic minister, the Honorable Paul Sedrak, a counselor, the ARIA award-winning musician, Joseph Tawadros, whom his brother is with us here today, John Tawadros, a member of the Board of Trustees, and the Young Australian of the Year, Dr. Daniel Noor, whose father has served the diocese in many roles in the past. For us Copts, El Nairuz, is a feast of triumphs, triumph over adversary. It marks the end of an era of persecution and martyrdom. Although our church has endured a long history of persecution, even in recent times, as witnessed by the martyrs of Libya, we have also witnessed the overcoming of adversity and experienced the change in rule in Egypt this positive change that has granted our mother church some respite from the mainstream persecution, albeit not entirely eradicating it. Here in Australia, we celebrate this new year as a, simple, or a symbol of triumph, triumph over adversity, as we look forward to a brighter, stronger, and more promising future. This optimism is fueled by the change that His Holiness Pope Tawadros II has brought to our diocese through the change in our constitution. A change that with the blessing of His Grace Bishop Daniel, we are working with Parliament to implement into our Property Trust Act. This change will empower our church, the church of the first century, to lead into the future and to accelerate beyond it. Our church is flourishing with new parishes opening, schools expanding, and plans in place to establish even more parishes and more schools. In conclusion, let us carry the spirit of El Nairuz with us throughout the year as a reminder of our resilience, our capacity for growth, and our ability to overcome challenges. May this new year bring blessings, prosperity, and continued success to our community and to all of Australia. Thank you. Um, Your Grace, thank you for joining us on this Momentum Coptic New Year, Nairuz. Um, firstly, your, your thoughts on the importance of celebrating um, Coptic New Year? I think it's very important that we, uh, we maintain our customs and our traditions and our faith. And on behalf of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of Australia, on behalf of His Eminence Archbishop Magarios, primate of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese, we wish the Coptic community a blessed new year, a year of good health and happiness and to strengthen our faith. And that must always be the goal as Christians. Thank you, Your Grace. Firstly, uh, your thoughts on this particular Nehru's event, uh, Coptic New Year? Look, very significant uh, in the Coptic calendar uh, Nauru's and uh, you know very uh, it is of course the, the Coptic New Year uh, and of course the Coptic community is such a holy community 
such a large community here in Australia and uh, you know my own grandparents came from Egypt uh, born in Port Said and Alexandria uh, you know and uh, you know that's that's you know one of the wonderful success stories of multiculturalism we have people from all over the globe here in New South Wales and here in Australia and I want to really pay tribute to uh, the Coptic community right throughout not just Australia but right throughout the world for what they have done in preserving uh, their culture, uh, their religion uh, and of course here in New South Wales we've seen you know a number of churches in recent years uh, being built and I was only just thinking a second ago that in my own area the St George community we've got a number I think we're up to four or five uh, Coptic churches and uh, uh, certainly the one at Peakhurst and uh, St Mark's and St Amina's of course uh, I've, I've been to and visited many times. And we're always thankful for all the support that we get from yourself as well and uh, the local government. Um, one final message for the Coptic community in celebration of this event. Uh, well, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the Coptic community, wish them a very happy, uh, holy new year uh, for Nauru's and uh, I want to thank them for their wonderful contribution to our local community and of course I want to also acknowledge uh, and pay tribute to Bishop Daniels, both of them and of course to all the priests and religious fathers and uh, everyone involved in the leadership of the Coptic community. Sir, thank you again for joining us and have a good evening.